Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to receive notifications when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So if you've seen some of my recent videos, you know that I've been working on a big craft room makeover, and you probably also know that it kind of took on an Alice in Wonderland theme somewhere in the third or fourth project. So I'm getting close to finishing, but I did want to add just a few little touches of decor for Alice in Wonderland. So I have five projects that I've been working on, and that turned into a really long video. So I'm going to be splitting that into two parts. So my next video, I'll be sharing um, an Alice in Wonderland cardboard curtain, uh, the silhouette art that I made to hang on my walls, and also my little magnet uh, pocket watch wall. Uh, so that'll be in next week's video. For today, I'm going to be remaking a big wooden key that I have. Um, it was made to just hang uh, your keys on, but it was just a fun giant key that made me think of Alice in Wonderland, so I wanted to kind of make that over. And also, I've seen online where people make uh, roses from decks of cards, which seemed like a perfect thing for Alice in Wonderland as well. So I'm going to be giving that a try. For this first project, I have this uh, wooden key holder that's in the shape of a key, and it's nice and big and just seems fun and Alice in Wonderlandy. but I want to change the color of it, so I'm going to remove the hardware, and I actually have a plan for that in an upcoming project. And then I'm just going to put some gold spray paint on it, uh, use a little bit of black to make it more antique looking, I think, that's my plan so far anyway, and I may use this... Uh, gold dimensional paint to add a few accents as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the hardware and then I'll be back once I have the key spray painted in the gold color. Alright, so here's my key. I've got a nice coat of gold spray paint on there and just to review, I used Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Metallic Finish and it gave me a nice shiny uh, finish so but I do want to make it a little more antiquey so to do that I'm going to use some paper towel some black paint my nice soft brush and I have some water over here as well so I'm going to start with some watered down black paint I don't want to get it into the indentation parts because I think that's where I want to leave the most black paint. All right, so let's give that a second, and then we're just gonna pull the paint back off with our wadded up paper towel. And you can add more black paint if you pull too much off. You can add a little water to the paper towel if you want to pull more paint off. It's pretty simple finish. So I'm just going to keep working and cover my whole key with this more antique look. So my antique finish is dry now and I'm going to go back with my metallic dimensional paint and just add a few little accents. So I think I'm probably going to try to fill in some of the holes and then, I don't know, I'm just going to play around with it. You'll see that it comes out in sort of a milkier color. It doesn't look like it's going to be very shiny, but when it dries it sh it's uh, got a nice gold finish to it. So like I said, I'm just kind of filling in the holes from the screws. And then I'm just going to kind of goof around. 
know exactly what my plan is. I'm gonna try to sort of finish this edge a little differently, I think. You see that? Yeah. There's a lot of detail on here already, so I don't need, probably need to get too carried away. So I'm probably just gonna finish this and let it dry, and then I may go back and do a little bit more with the dimensional paint. This depends on whether I'm inspired to do something else or not. So we'll let that dry and then we'll reevaluate. So that first bit of dimensional glue is dry. You can't even really see it unless I turn it sideways where I filled in the holes. And for some reason, I'm just feeling like I want to do an outline all the way around the key with this dimensional paint. So I'm going to do that. And this brand is made by Tulip that I'm using. I'm sure there are other people that make the same thing. But the thing is that it has a, a nice pointed tip that you can just squeeze the paint out of. So it's not perfect, but I'm just going to start squeezing out a bead all along the edge here. Hopefully it won't slide off. And then I'll let that dry and I think I'll be done at that point. You can see I kind of went over the edge here, but so far it's clinging, so that's good. I think it's gonna stay on there, but you do wanna be a little bit careful. So I'll finish this up and then we'll be ready to put it on the display shelf, I think. So here's the next project we're going to be making. It's a paper rose heart made with a deck of cards. And I used some wire hanger, a little bit of florist tape, and then I just had some scraps of fabric that I used for the leaves. So the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to try to make a rose with just the spades. So this has just the 13 cards in it. Uh, which is kind of smaller than some of the other ones you might see online, but uh, I wanted to make at least four hearts, so or four roses. So I'm going to make another one like this, and then I may make sort of more of a rose bud and one of the bigger roses, so that I'll end up with four total. So for this project, we're just going to make uh, this size out of some out of the set of clubs. So the first thing I need to do is cut my stem, and like I said, I used a part of a hanger, so you need some pretty heavy duty cutters to cut these hangers. And I want to get four stems, so I'm just going to cut this bottom piece in half. Might get a little, I don't know, this might go flying somewhere. There we go. So there's my stem. And then, like I said, I need my cards. I'm going to be using the clubs. And in the other tutorials, I've seen people use uh, the hot glue. I have my hot glue heating up, but I also like to use this fabric tack because um, hot glue doesn't stay very well. It tends to when it gets warm, it loses its hold, and I actually didn't think it held the cards in the first place that well. So I'm going to be using mostly this tap tack. So I watched a couple of videos, and of course they make this look very, very simple. Um, but it's actually harder to hold than you think it might be. So I'm going to start this a little bit. roll it first and then I'll put some glue on it. But like I said, this, it's not as simple as they make it look in the videos, to be honest. Alright. 
I'm going to open that back up. And you want to only put about glue halfway up. Now the thing about the fabric tack is that you do have to hold it a little bit longer for it to dry than the hot glue. So I may try to use both just to make this go a little faster. If you've watched some videos, you'll know that they do a lot faster than this. But like I said, it's not as easy to hold as you might think. All right. Let's see if I can put a little hot glue here to speed this up. The other thing is obviously it's not tight around this, so I'm gonna have to stick some hot glue in there, I guess. All right, I'm gonna hold that for a minute and then I'll be back. All right, well that's drying, which uh, it helps to have a little clothespin for that first part. This fabric tack does dry fairly quickly, but it's it does take a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna kind of pick some cards at random. I'm gonna cut two, sort of more petally shape. They're not exact, obviously. And then I have a pencil to kind of roll them up so that I can wrap them around. See, that hot glue doesn't really hold at all. all right. <clears throat> Add a little more fabric tack. And I, the video tutorials that I saw, they added it like almost halfway up, but I found it was a little bit easier if you didn't put it quite so far up on the card. So I'm only doing about a quarter. And then I'm just going to wrap it around. And for these first few cards that you add, the clothespin is helpful, I think. I'll let that set up for a minute. And then we can cut the rest of our cards. So for the rest of these, we're just cutting to about halfway in the middle, point to about halfway in the middle. The less you put on, the quicker it dries, but of course you want to make sure you have enough to make it hold. Now for this first one, I'm going to actually put this new piece straight across from the other one and wrap it around. Go ahead and put that back on with my paper clip, or my clothespin. What am I using? Clothespin. And we'll cut some more cards. All right, so for the rest of these, we're gonna actually curl the corners back a little bit using our pencil. I'm also just kind of using fingers to fold them back. And then you're gonna take front of it. At first I was just folding these, but it made too much of a crease, so it's better if you wrap them around the pencil. You have some nicer curves that way. And again, we're going to just put a little bit of glue on the bottom quarter here. And 
And here's where you want to start maybe just staggering your pieces a little bit more. So the first two you put on right across from each other, if that makes sense. But clip that in place for a minute. But the next piece I want to put, I don't want to put straight across, I want to kind of put it, start it here so it goes, so it wraps around. Sort of more in thirds maybe. That made sense. It also gets harder as it gets bigger, it gets harder to hold. I'm about not to be able to use this anymore. But here I don't want to put this straight across, I want to kind of put it you know, stagger it if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to try to hold this with my fingers. And I found that a pipe cleaner came in pretty handy too. So what I want to do here is I'm going to wrap this around and kind of tighten up the glue. I'm going to make sure I'm keeping it in the right place here. Now you do have to hold the, the pipe cleaner because it will slide off, but all you have to do is kind of hold it up. It just makes it easier to hold. So I need to hold this for a few minutes and then I'll add another piece. Alright, so I carefully set that down. Hopefully it's going to hold in place. It doesn't look like my pipe cleaner is slipping off too much, so I'm going to try to add another piece here. Alright, so hopefully you can see the top of this. I'm going to stagger this. Again. I'm just going to hold the tip and then I'm going to try to wrap it tighter with my pipe cleaner here. Like I said, it does get kind of awkward to hold. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And then we'll be back to add one more around here and then we'll kind of start another layer. So I've got six more petals. I think this is going to turn out maybe just a hair bigger than the other one, which is good. It's a little more open in the middle here. But I'm just going to continue working until I have all the rest of my pieces on. Okay, so I'm going to try something totally different here. So I've just put three things on and I'm going to try to gently hold the top of it a little tighter than it's going to, norm than it's going to end up because the glue doesn't go all the way to the top. And then I need to hold the bottom a little tighter. Alright, we'll see what happens. I just want to check the bottom here so everything's kind of adhering now it looks like. So I'm just going to hold this for another minute or two until the glue is totally set. All right, so my glue is nice and dry now. Uh, this rose actually did turn out a little tighter than my first one, but it's okay, they're about the same size it looks like. So to finish this rose up, I'm gonna use a little bit more fabric tack. I have some florist tape here. Uh, some people can use this without glue probably, but I can't, so <laughs> I need to start it off with some glue, and I'm just gonna cover You know about an inch up or so however a normal flower would be covered and then once you get down to the wire part you don't need the glue but for this to get it started I have, am never able to make it stay where it's supposed to so I always start with some glue And 
Anyway, I'm going to just get this first layer wrapped around and then you can see it's sliding around pretty pretty much. So I'm just going to wrap this around, let the glue set up, and then we'll start winding down to cover the wire. All right, so once you get the glue uh, dried on the around the card so it doesn't slide off anymore, you can just easily twist the tape and wrap all the way down the stem. And then what I do when I get to the end is I usually just tear it a little ways down and I spin back up toward the top and then I'll put a little dab of glue on it to hold it as well. For my petal or for my leaves, I actually pulled a rag out of my dusting, my rag bin. It's an old shirt that I had, but um, and it, it's just a knit shirt, but it's very floppy. So uh, I just ended up putting um, a couple of coats of Mod Podge. I just made sure I put one on both sides and let it dry. So now I have kind of a nice stiff fabric that I can use to cut my leaves out of. So let me just cut this off so I can throw the rest of it back in my rag pile. And then I think I'll probably just put two leaves on this one like I did the last one. Maybe I'll make them a little bit bigger. You can trace them out or cut them free form, however you want to do it. And then I put a crease in them. I don't know if it'll hold or not, but it has a nice stiff feel to it with that Mod Podge, so it may actually hold. And then I'm just going to put a little of the fabric tac glue on there. It's an awful lot squeezed out of this bottle here. Sort of stick them together to start with. And then Go ahead and, and then I'll just attach them to my stem. And that is it. Once they're actually dried on there, I can kind of reshape the leaves. But for now, I just want to kind of hold them tight and let the glue dry. All right, so here are my four finished roses. These are the two that just have uh, 13 cards a piece. And then I did a little rosebud. I think it has about seven. And then you can see this one's a little bit bigger. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to display these yet. So I have a little bit of green left if I want to add a leaf or two. But uh, I think they're just going to be on a shelf. So like I said, I'm not entirely sure how they're going to look. But hopefully they'll make a cute little rose display. All right, so here's my finished key, and I just put my roses in a little painted tin can for part of my shelf display. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check back next week. I'll be posting the other three projects. And if you want to check out any of the other projects in this craft room series makeover, you can check the comment section of this video for links to all of those projects.